So today you and I are going to focus on topic four, the foreign exchange market. And as you can see, we kick off this chapter with discuss in detail. And as soon as you see that wording, discuss in detail, you know, hey, this is a possible long question. So let's first speak about foreign exchange and then a market. So remember, guys and girls, when we started with economics in grade 12, we looked at the circular flow again. We've done it in grade 10, we've done it in grade 11, and now in grade 12, this shouldn't be anything new to you. So the circular flow, how money circulates in an economy. And we said there's four role players involved. We have our businesses, we have households, or the customer, if you want to call it that. We've got our factor market, and then we've got our goods and services market. But what do we also have? We are not a closed economy. We have just outside our door, just outside South Africa, we have foreigners. Um, and, and in that foreign market, we trade. So let's start with something simple where we think of South Africa and we think of Namibia. Namibia is like next door to us. But as soon as a foreigner from Namibia move into our country and spend money here, it's foreign trade. And if we go over the border to Namibia or Botswana, it's foreign trade. So if we have apples and we send it to Namibia, it's foreign trade and vice versa. But now let's zoom out a little. Now let's look at the whole map of the world. And here at the bottom is South Africa. And anything and everything that we trade with anybody besides South Africa is foreign trade. So if you have a cell phone, I promise you that was not produced in South Africa. We imported that from another country. That is foreign trade. In South Africa, especially in the Western Cape, we have a lot of wine. We send this wine all over. We send it to Germany, to China, Australia, wherever. England, we have a big market in, in, in England. And as soon as we send that goods over to another country, it is seen as foreign trade. But learners, we are not just looking at foreign trade. It is the market for. So I want you to quickly, in your mind, um imagine this situation because we're going to speak about it again later on in the session so pretend for a moment you have a family member that stays in america and they come to visit you and um they put a hundred dollar bill in a envelope that they give you okay so um so imagine for a moment they now give you this hundred dollar note. Wow, you rich, ne? Because I mean, at this point in time, for every one dollar, you will get sixteen rand. Wow! So that hundred dollars is an actual fact, a thousand six hundred rand. Whoa! Oh, I wonder what you will do with that money. But yes, the but, and this is the little example you must keep in the back of your mind. Can you go to Edgar's with that hundred dollar note and pay for this new pair of sneakers that you are trying to buy? What will the lady or the uncle at the cash register tell you if you want to pay with that hundred dollar note? Sorry, my child, I can't help you. You need to pay in rands. And I think that's important to remember as we move through this chapter. So if we send our wine to America, we will get paid in dollars, yes, but we can't 
do anything with that dollars. So we need to increase uh, or we need to exchange that dollars to rands. So can you see if we import, um, there will be a larger demand for rands, né? because the foreigner is bringing currency into this country that now needs to be converted into rands and vice versa. But OK, I'm running. I'm um, running a, or getting ahead of myself. Let's look at the um, exam guidelines. So this discuss in detail the reasons for international tra trade is actually just a very fancy way of saying why, why we love why questions in economics. Why do we trade? No, yeah, why do we trade? Or let's make it even more simple. Why do we import and export? Forget about these reasons here at the bottom. That, forget about it. Think about it in your mind. Why do we import? Well, they have things that we don't. I mean, if we want to be honest about it, how many of us love eating rice with our curries? We don't grow rice ourselves. We need to import it. Okay, lacquer. So why do we export? Well, we have something that they want. Um, we have beautiful, uh, apologies, we have beautiful agricultural products. We have apples and oranges and all the nice fresh stuff that we grow and produce in South Africa. What do we have that everybody wants? We have a lot of gold, nay? Or we had a lot of gold. So, this is one of the first reasons why we actually import and export. But now, you know, economics, we like to put things in, in little boxes. So now we put it in demand reasons and in supply reasons. So um, in, in the demand side, we look at the reasons you and I as the consumer demand more. Why do we demand international tr trade? OK, so I'm just going to run through it. I don't want to spend a lot of time on this because I know your teachers have done with this with you. OK, but the size of the population, if we are bigger than we were before and our local um, producers can't tend to our needs, then we need to import it. OK, like it, that's straightforward. The second one, income levels. Yo, ne? The richer we are, the... Um, more different our demands become. Maybe we want to import the new watch that only Usain Bolt is wearing in America. Then we can do it because we have a different income level. Maybe there's a perfume that's only available in America right now. Then we import it. But it has, can you see there's a relationship between our income and what we demand? So as soon as we... Um, as soon as we earn more, we tend to demand different things and that causes international trade to happen. Um, change in wealth of the population. That's interesting. So as our country becomes richer, we will. Um, we tend to demand different things. So the more money, the more we consume, the more we need to import. Can you see it's like this ongoing thing? that if our local suppliers can't supply, we import, of, or if our local suppliers supply what we don't want, we import it. And the same goes for the foreigners, okay? Um, preferences and taste, maybe our market don't have what we want, so we import it. Um, I mean, we don't have a Apple factory in South Africa. I'm referring to the software, like the telephone, the iPhone. We need to import that. So if your preference is to have a Apple iPhone as a cell phone, that is a demand reason for trade to take place. Then the difference in consumption patterns. This is so interesting. I had this discussion with my children in class this week. A few years ago, um, this is now a backstory, apologies, eh? but um, 
So you know you are South African. We love to eat chicken. I mean, yo, how many times a week do we all eat chicken? And if we can choose something, we want to go to KFC, etc. Okay, so we eat a lot of chicken. But in America, um, they also eat chicken, obviously, but they only choose a certain part of the chicken that they enjoy. And then the rest of the chicken is almost like seen as an inferior type of product. Okay, but. If you want to um, import chicken into South Africa, it's quite expensive because the government um, have imposed quite a lot of taxes to make it expensive so that those people don't bring their chicken into our country. And a few years ago, the government lifted this um, tax on the chicken, which made it much cheaper, or not much cheaper, but cheaper to import the chicken from America. And what happened was that people just uh, started importing the chicken and they didn't um, support the local chicken farmers. But can you see how the consumption pattern, because we in South Africa, we don't mind what part of the chicken we eat, we just want chicken, where they are, um, uh, in Afrikaans we say finicky, full of nonsense almost, about what piece of chicken they want. So can you see how interesting this is? The consumption pattern affects what we import and export. Another little story. So my husband um, works um, in India quite a bit. And Indian, um, in India, they do not use um, alcohol as much as we do in South Africa. And the reason why is because um, a big part of the country, um, it's against their religion, their beliefs to actually consume alcohol. So can you imagine, I mean, if you are a wine exporter from South Africa, will India be one of your like um, markets you want to focus on? Probably not. You might look for a um, for a country where the demand for your product is high. So all of this consumption, what we consume, how much of it consume leads to us importing and exporting. And the fancy word for that is trade. So I'm asking this again. Why do we trade internationally? OK, and then the last one, this is um again. It's a um, term that when you see it, you want to think, oh, economics, are, it, it, it's so uh, difficult. It's not. What are they saying there? Absolute and comparative advantage. That is one of the reasons why we trade. Some countries are better than other in certain things, and that's the bottom line. So if you look at South Africa as a whole, we are very good in our primary sector. We mine and we farm and we fish. We are absolute specialists. We have vast amounts of open space that we can farm on, okay? So let's use China next to us as a comparison. They do not necessarily have open, uh, well, they do, but I mean, a, a, a mass amounts of open spaces to farm, etc. What are they brilliant at? What do they specialize in manufacturing? So one of the reasons we trade is because we are good at something and we'll send you that thing. And another country is good at something else and they'll send me that something. Does it make sense? We become specialists. So if you think of coffee, um, Coffee is a specialist product of Brazil, Colombia. That's what they're good at. Yes, we do also do have coffee, but we are not mass producers or mass farmers of coffee. Um, so the reason why we trade is we use the stuff that somebody is better than uh, at than us. And what is the main reason for this? Because the better you become at something, the cheaper it becomes to produce it. So it's cheaper for us to get the coffee from Kenya than to grow it ourselves. It's cheaper for China 
to import the apples from South Africa than to grow it themselves. So all of this is our demand reason for trade. So when you study this, please ensure that you, you're very sure of this is demand reasons and this is the supply reasons. I quickly want to just show you what I've um, shown my kids on the board, which what I would do if this was me in um, grade 12. So I would just take a um, a normal white folio or an empty page, whatever you want to call it, and I will create um, a little table like this. And then I will make this my heading and I will say reasons for um, international trade. OK, lacquer. So, you know, this is what I'm studying and we know this is a possible long question. So why wouldn't you do it? OK, they in the middle and then you split it into two. Then you say this is the demand side reasons. And this is the supply. Oh, Hati, sorry. Supply side reasons. So when you start to study this, you know, OK, hang on. We don't only have one side. One of the sides has to do with the consumer and what they want and uh, our preferences and our income, etc. And then on the other side, we have the supply side. So now we're going to look at the producer. I always tell my kids, OK, so now you must take off, off the, cons uh, yeah, the consumer cap and put on the producer cap. We are now a business. So supply side reasons. So let's go back to the notes and see what it says. So supply side reasons, natural resources. Guys, can we supply oil in South Africa? No, because we don't have any. It's not one of the natural resources we have in South Africa. So, but what can we supply? Gold, diamonds, because we have that. So that is why trade takes place, because some countries have something and other countries don't, but we both need it. Think about oil. We need oil to get petrol to have our cars, et cetera, et cetera. Climatic conditions. Another thing, think about Alaska. So if you don't know Alaska, Alaska is very cold. So do you think Alaska can grow mangoes? Let me tell you something about mangoes. Mangoes loves uh, hot weather, like humid weather. You know where that grows brilliantly in South Africa? In Durban because it's hot and it's humid and we have a lot of water. So a supply reason for trade is that in Durban, South Africa, we can grow mangoes and Alaska, not so much because it snows half of the time. OK, labor resources, again, interesting. Why don't you think America um, has the same amount of farming uh, industry as we have? because they don't have as much unskilled laborers. So in South Africa, we have vast amounts of people that can work on farms, that wants to work on farms. Um, so let's take, um, let's take something different like a doctor. Um, if there is a doctor only in America that can do an operation I need, then they will supply that labor to me in order to get that operation. So either I'll go there for the operation or maybe the doctor will come here and perform the operation. So can you see labor also um, plays a role? Technology, same thing. Um, some people have better technology than others. So um, China, I've, again, I've said this, they are very good with the manufacturing. So they have very well developed technology to mass produce stuff. So they make like, I don't know, millions of units per minute. We can't do the same. So because they can make so much in such a short time, they can export because they've got a surplus. And um, specialization, we've spoken about that. We are specialists in agriculture, and that's why we supply it. And then capital, okay? So one of the reasons we trade 
is because of money. Makes sense, now. Okay, so this one here is the first essay question in this chapter. And then they just ask you briefly discuss the effects of international trade. So guys, this is not a long question, but you know, must know this four headings and a sentence underneath each. So let's just speak about English, the language. Um, if I tell you, <laughs> I will be eating McDonald's for the next 30 days every day. What will the effect of that be on me? Oh, I'm going to be tired. I'm not going to have money. My stomach's going to ache. That's the effect. Okay. So back to economics. What is the effect of international trade? So we do trade. And what is the result of? Okay. So we become specialists at what we do. We can make mass amounts of units. We become more efficient because we force to. We trade with the whole world. We don't just compete with South Africa. And then the last one is this globalization, where this is the world. The world has become one. We depend on one another. We know exactly what's going on. Um, so this is a effect of international trade. Okay, moving on. That's the first part. Then the second part of this, um, the second part of this chapter is the one that most learners struggle with. Now, I don't want you to feel uneasy or anything like that, my child. You must remember, this is the great thing about economics. Um, I'm going to show you now that um, this is not a possible essay question. OK, so the most amount of marks, the maximum amount of marks that can be tested from this work is 10. OK, but then remember, if it's the 10 marks, it's the data response questions. So let me just show you again. I won't spend too much time on this, but let's pretend this is now question 2.2. So the most amount is 2.2.1, one mark, 2.2.2, two marks, Ugh, another one mark, apologies, 2.2.3, two marks, 2.2.4. Oh my word, can I just type? two marks and then 2.2.5 is the four marks and this is also split into the type of question they ask this is a lower order question this is a lower order question this is always a definition so if you study your definitions then they can't catch you out definition it looks funny but okay this is your middle order question and then this is your higher order question so the long and the short is my child. If you study the theory regarding the balance of payment, you will be able to get at least six out of 10. And then you miss four marks in the entire paper. I mean, that is not even 3% of the paper. So don't see the balance of payment and just decide, no, you're not going to do this. Study the the structure, the skeleton of this and understand the concept and then you'll be fine. So even if you can't answer that last four marks, it's fine. Let's focus on the first six and make sure that we can definitely, definitely get that. OK, so I'm going to spend quite a bit of time today on this because this is also the work my kids struggle with because it's brand, brand new. So moving back to the exam guidelines, um, they just uh, give you the give you uh, the definition of and then what the balance of payment comprise of consists of if I can call it that. So I have sat yesterday and sun uh, and Saturday with um, trying to make this a little more visual and a little easier for all of us to understand. 
but I think we must start with the definition. So let's start with this definition here. I'm going to read it to you and then quickly explain it to you. So the balance of payment is a comprehensive. Comprehensive means it's a lot of details, okay? Comprehensive and systematic record. So what does systematic mean? It means that we can't make up our own nonsense on what we will include and, ah, I don't list to put this in. It no, doesn't work that way. If we have a balance of payment and China ha have a, a balance of payment and we compare the two, we will both understand what's going on, on in those documents. Okay, so it's comprehensive, all inclusive and systematic. It's a, there's a format of all transactions between one country and another. Oh, well, not even another, the rest of the world. So one country and the rest of the world for normally a year. Okay, so I want to take you back to grade eight and nine EMS. Oh, and then a lot of kids want to sit like this. But I don't want to make you uh, uh, um, feel stressed or anything. I just want to take you back to accounting. We accounting is this is what accounting is basically now well, this is a accounting system it's a document it's a document that has rules and regulations and we can't change what is included and what is excluded so this document will look the same for all countries but south africa we have a balance of payment and in that document we will look at all the basically imports and exports between us and the rest of the world. But I think the important thing that we must remember is we don't just import and export goods. We don't just send apples and receive cell phones. We also export labor. I mean, I've just mentioned that my husband works in India quite often prior to COVID. Um, I have a friend that work in Angola. Um, that's exports of labor, so it's an export of a service. Um, do you think we have people in South Africa that own properties in other countries? Of course, eh? um, they have a, I don't know, a flat in New York. Um, obviously, they must be very rich, but it does happen. So that is a transaction between South Africa and America. And we need to have a document, a comprehensive document, where we look at how much trade is taking place between us and the rest of the world. So I think that's the first part we need to look at. So um, if you look at this, forget about the arrows here on the side. This is a balance of payment. So this is the document, the comprehensive systematic document telling us how South Africa is trading with the rest of the world. Okay, but can you see Mr. Green was very kind to very clearly tell us and show us that this document is split into three, one, two, three major parts. So I tell my kids it's the three legs of the table, okay? We can't just have two legs. We must look at everything comprehensive. I know I sound like a dummy, but I mean, that's the definition. It's comprehensive. It's all including. But when you look at it, it's, it's not that difficult. The first one, this first leg of the table is my current account. And then we basically look at exports and imports of goods and services. I'm going to repeat that exports and imports of goods and services, okay? So our apples being exported, here we go, that's part of that. Our cell phones being imported, where's my mouse? Goods, imports, can you see, okay? Services receipts. So my husband working overseas and earning money. There we go. A foreigner, that doctor coming to do the operation, yeah? 
There we go. So it's all goods and services that are imported and exported in and out of South Africa. Because remember, this is the document where we want to show that. Okay. Then the second leg of this table is capital transfer. Guys and girls, what does capital mean in, in, in economics? It means assets. Who owns what assets? Do people have houses in South Africa? Or maybe they have flats in New York? That's what we're looking at at that. Né? Our capital. And then the last one is our finances. So basically everything else. Do we own shares on the other side? Or do people uh, own shares in South Africa? Um, have I saved some money in a bank on that side? Or are people saving money in an APSA bank account on this side? That's the type of stuff we look at in the financial account. So what I've done is I have created a little spreadsheet like this. And you will see I focus quite a bit on the first leg of the table, the current account. And the reason for that is they, um, the people that set the exam papers, we tend to see a trend on what they like to ask and what they like to test. And I don't know, this is a personal opinion, but in my mind, this is the one they enjoy asking. So I want to start with that. So remember, this document is split into three. You and I are now only focusing on the first part, which is the current account. OK, so what I've done, I just want to explain to you a little um, what I've done here. So I've just copied and pasted what Mr. Green has told us here. Né? So this is our exports. This is our gold exports, the services we receive money for, income we receive. Then we say, yeah, less our imports, less our payments, and less our income payments. So can you see it's, I mean, the same thing on this side and this side. The one is just exports and the other one is imports. And then we just have a, a, a separate little item here for gold. I'll um, touch on that just now. And then we have something which is almost the like, third part of the current account. So I almost want to make this 1.1, 1.2, and 1.3. So this current transfer was quite a sticky thing for me as well. And I, you can see I have a link over here that I actually um, posted there for myself because I want to use this in my class as well to go and show them. There's a very nice video um, explaining this as well. And a current transfer is um, money that is either given to us or paid by us, but we don't get anything in return for it. So it's like donations or um, grants that we give somebody, but we don't get anything in return for it. Okay, so that little symbol over there shows you and I today that can you see that we have donated more than what we have actually received? Okay. So that is why there's a minus. Okay. So in this first leg of the current account, this is basically everything we are sending out the country and we're getting money for it. And that's why it's pluses. And I made them all in green because green is good and we add them together and we get a little subtotal there. So everything that we are exporting and are earning money for is, I don't know, 1329110. I can't even pronounce it. So I've, I've shown you there. I add A1 plus A2 plus A3 plus A4. So that gives us, let's make that green, uh, yeah, green as well to show you that is all the good stuff. But now we know we're not an island. We're not, we don't only export. We also import stuff, unfortunately. So we look at all the goods that we've imported, all the services that we've import, imported and all the payments we've made. And if we add those three together, we will get an amount that is mentioned there. Okay, 
So you know mines, I mean, this should just be, we subtract the two from one another and then we get our current account. You are 100% correct, my child. It's exports minus imports. That's what it is. Remember when we looked at the circular flow, we want to see which carries the most weight. Is it the injections or the leakages? But now we have this little side item where we must either add or subtract it. So if you look at this amount here, we basically take the green minus this, and the, depending on the symbol, it's a minus or a plus. And that gives us the balance of our current account. Okay, so all our exports minus our imports, and this was a negative, so it makes this a it makes it a bigger negative, which gives us a negative 176298. But here's something important that I want to make you aware of. So let's highlight this. Let's make it ooh, a nice blue. Can you see that word trade balance? So trade balance, we only look at the goods we exported minus the goods we imported. So it's that amount and that amount. But in South Africa, we have a special item for our net gold exports. Why? Think about it. Tell me, why would we in South Africa include a special line for gold because it is one of our biggest GDP generators in South Africa. It is so important that it has its own little line. So trade means imports versus exports. Okay, so we only look at the goods versus the goods, but we include the gold. So we add the exports plus the gold because it's important it's also th something we are exporting remember that minus our imports and that gives us the trade balance i want to park there for a minute because this is um, uh, um this is the one leg of this table this is the third of the balance of payment they love to focus on I want to just reiterate a few things. Trade balance, you must know how to calculate it. Goods export plus gold export minus goods import. That gives me the trade balance. That can actually be a higher order question. And then you've got that four marks there. Eh? Okay. The whole formula to calculate that little guy over there. All the exports, everything we've exported, even if it's services minus all the imports, even if it's a service, and then we plus or minus the donation in the grant, depending on if it's a plus or a negative. So what I want to do, want you guys to do, I'm going to, it's a good time now, it's quarter to four, so I'm going to give you 15 minutes. I want you, this is on page, let me just see, on page eight of your learner's manual. I want you to complete this question three for me and then you and I will mark this. So what I will do for the kids that might not have the notes here, I will quickly just make this um, so that it fits onto the screen. Oh, now the technology is winning me. Apologies for that. So I want you for the next 15 minutes or well, yeah, 15 minutes to quickly grab a pen and paper and try and see if you can answer these questions. And then when I'm back, we will answer this. So can you see, this is what I said. You will definitely be able to answer that and that and that and that. And uh, basically you will be able to answer 3.5 as well. Okay, go.
Okay, I gave you a extra few <laughs> seconds. I hope everybody had enough time to complete this. So this is the question and um, you can very clearly see it says balance of payments. So really your brain should tell you, okay, there's three parts to this balance of payment. Maybe you can't remember all three, that's fine, but no, there's three parts. And what is it about? South Africa trading with the rest of the world. Okay, so question number one. How many sub accounts are there in the balance of payment? I hope everybody got this right. Three more, uh, <laughs> three marks. Three sub accounts, so give yourself one tick. Which account in the balance of payment reflects the figures of the trade balance? Okay, so they just want to know where's the trade balance? And you know, current account. Remember, our trade balance is basically the exports of our goods plus the exports of our gold because we have a separate line because it's so important to South Africa minus the imports of our goods. Okay. Briefly describe the term trade balance. That's an interesting one. I mean, I just said it and so it's the value of our exports minus the value of our imports. So I'm bringing you back. I'll put this slide on just now, but I want to bring you back to this. Remember this, our data response, where I said 2.2.3 is always a definition. So if you look at this, it's a definition. So it's the value of the exports minus the value of the imports. So I mean, our, good, our, our gold is also just exports, but we put it separately. So that's why we must first add it. Okay, you must raise your hand or say something in the chat if I'm going too fast, but this wasn't too difficult, these two. Good. Now, this question is almost to me now, touching on the, um, on chapter eight, where we are asking, what can South Africa do to affect the exports of goods positively. So they want to know what can the government do, because that's what they refer to when they say South Africa. What can the government do so that we will export more? Can you see? That's what it says. So what can we do? I mean, I think Uncle Cyril can visit China and tell him, hey, we've got some apples. <laughs> My child, if you wrote it like that, you will still get a mark. Because what are we saying? The government should form relationships with other countries and tell them, look for new markets, tell them what we have. Okay, but let's look at the nice answer. So they say, the first thing is, we should improve the inform, uh, impo uh, sorry guys, improving the performance of the manufacturing and services industry. Makes sense. So we should manufacture better and more so that we export more. We should um, improve our technology and productivity again so that we can uh, 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 um, produce more goods so that we can export. Maximize the use of our factors of production. So we must optimally use our factors of production. I just want to reiterate, I actually did this with my kids in class last week. This is part of chapter eight. Um, so, I mean, you will have a better feel once you've done that chapter. And then this one is give businesses subsidies and incentives. So tell them, hey, here's some money. If you export, we'll give you some. Who's not going to export? Okay. And so the one I mentioned is maybe the government can look for um, potential markets themselves. Um, let me add it in there. Mm. This, the government really truly does the, do this. They go out and look for places where we might um, 
have something that we can sell. So the Department of Trade and Industry go, they go to fairs all over the world and tell them about South Africa and what we have. And they basically, they are the middleman. So they get the buyer and they get the seller and they can make a connection um, between them. Okay. Remember, this is only two marks. So two marks is one proper fact. Again, my children asked today, and I mean, they've been in my class for three years. Then they asked, ma'am, am I allowed to write in a bullet? Yeah, you are allowed to write in a bullet, but a full sentence bullet. You can't just say improve manufacturing. You're going to get one mark because it needs to be a proper full sentence. Okay, and then the last one. How does international trade affect the economy positively how does trade help us guys we get things that we don't have lacquer two marks and what do we get we get foreign currency that move into our country the you have four marks did you have to study this no i mean it's we we've been doing this over and over and over we want to trade with inter international um kind of, uh, with foreigners because we want their expertise, we want their natural resources, or not just their natural resources, we want their goods and services, but we also want their money. Okay, so for four marks, you need two proper facts. So again, you are allowed to give me two bullets, but the two bullets must be full sentences. And because this is a higher order question, I need a good sentence. Okay, so the first thing, how does international trade affect the economy posit positively? It stimulates growth and raises the standard of living. We are wealthier. Domestic industries, so local industries, will succeed in global markets because people want what we have. Specialization will take place. We will focus on that what we are very good at. It might lead to mass production, so we will increase our efficiency. This one is all about relationship. This is truly the one we did in class today. So um, we are forming relationships with other countries. Eh? Um, it says that it's leading to globalization, which increases international cooperation and communication. And it creates interdependence. We are dependent on another country, which makes them vulnerable to economic shocks that occur outside their borders. Again, two proper facts and you are on your way. How does international affect the economy positive, positively? We get what we need and we get foreign currency. So can you see that's not even listed there? But yeah, very nicely it says, accept any other relevant answer and that is definitely relevant we are getting injections in our economy and the economy is growing i'm going to keep it there for a minute so maybe somebody wants to copy it Okay, let's move on. So back to the learner's manual. Can you see this is all questions from old question papers? And I mean, this is the second one that they are asking, uh, that they are testing the current account. Okay, so I'm going to give you, um, we'll have to be smart with our time right now. Um, I'm going to give you 10 minutes. Uh, if you can quickly, as m quick as possible, answer this 10 minutes, and then we'll have 10 minutes to mark it. And then, unfortunately, our session um, is done for the day. So, okay, quick, quick, 10 minutes, let's go.
Okay, I hope you got everything done. Um, yeah, we are a little bit pressed for time, so let's see. I'm going to work my a little faster than normally. Okay. Um, so we know this is an extract from the balance of payment and it's the current account part of it. And they ask us, number one, name one other account that forms part of the BOP. So they basically just wants to know, name one of the other two legs of the table. So we know number two is the capital transfer and number three is the financial account. We, um, you don't have to think about it. Nay? Then this is an interesting one. So which item captures the effect of a foreigner purchasing shares on the JSC Security Exchange? OK, so I know we are stretched for time, so I will have to touch on this next time, but um, it is the portfolio investment. This is part of the notes and you must study it. So if you didn't know where to um, to get this, maybe just make a little asterisk and go and look for it in your notes. But this is part of the financial, the third leg, the financial account. And it's just basically the part where foreigners buy shares in South Africa and we um, buy shares in other countries. So yeah, just take note. Can you see this is a low order? So they assume you have studied this. Apologies if I'm running a little, um, yeah, going through this quick. So portfolio, inv uh, portfolio, portfolio investment. Okay. Remember I said, surprise, it's always a definition. Define the term balance of payment. So you know, copy and paste, comprehensive, systematic record, one country with the other country over a period of a year. So we don't have to look at that even. That is straightforward, copy and paste. Give yourself two marks if you got it right. What is the significance of the balance on the current account? Sure, that is interesting. So why is the current account important to us? And it says here, and I would definitely write this down. This is a very, very nice um, middle order question. So I wouldn't have even gone to that, but OK. It gives us an indication whether a country is living within its means. So um, if we import more than what we export we are in trouble and that is what the current account will show us that we are losing more money than with what which we are actually um getting in so in my mind the significance the importance of the current account is telling us are we at a deficit there is a, just a little spelling error are we at a deficit or do we have a surplus? And you can see in almost all the figures we have, we always have a deficit. We have a problem. We import more than what we export. Um, so yes, um, the country isn't living within its means because we are paying other people more than what they are paying us. And then the last two questions. What is the Im what impact will the deficit on the current account have on an economy? So if they are asking the current account, if our imports are more than our exports, that's what they're asking. What is the impact on our economy? The economy is shrinking, my child. Now, so it says it will have a negative effect on the economy. It says there that foreign exchange reserve will be reduced to settle international debt. So we are owing some people money. So we're in trouble. Domestic prices of goods and service will increase um, because we import more. Okay? And it will have a negative effect on economic growth. So I would start with negative effect. Why? Because our leakages are more than injections we are losing more money this it's to a economic um, decline economic decline so in my mind we would hook that at the end of the year and give you two marks so there you've got two marks what now my second thing that i would have spoken about is this our local prices 
will actually increase because we are now importing the things um, and and the imported they speak here about imported inflation okay and then the last one hopefully you didn't struggle with this and think it's a higher order because now you know they wanted us to calculate the trade balance so before we look at that what did they want exports of goods plus our gold because it's so important minus the imports of goods so you took the goods exports there we go plus the gold exports there you go gives us the subtotal there minus our imported goods because that's a leakage that's money leaving the country and that gives us a negative trade balance again kids and if they ask you what does that mean we are importing more than what we are exporting that's not good for our country if we continue to import more than what we're exporting our economy will continue to shrink 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 because we are sending more of our money from out south africa to other places and they are not doing the same back into our country i'm going to leave that there for a minute So I see Ms. Bayman um, ask you guys again there just to complete the attendance register if you are here. And then I would like to thank you for your time and again that you are here. And um, as I started this session, um, taking ownership of your future. Um, everything that you do extra puts you that step ahead of everybody else. And we do this because we want the best for you. Um, we as teachers, we are your biggest cheerleaders and we want you to succeed. 